Good morning, dear colleagues and guests. Let me declare open a session of the Dissertation Council for the Dissertation Thesis by Krotos Alexandrovich for the degree of Candidate of Chemical Sciences. It's academic specialization 020014, radiochemistry on the theme, thermal methods for isolation of medical radionuclides for irradiated targets. According to the orders in Petersburg University, dated the 14th of February, uh, 2020. Move, member of the Governor of Doctor of Chemical Sciences, Professor, acting head of. Good morning, dear colleagues and guests. Let me declare open a session of the Dissertation Council. Uh, members of the Dissertation Council were appointed by the same order. In accordance with the orders in Petersburg University, dated the 23rd of March, 2020, number 2304 1, our meeting is held in the remote access mode, which includes my colleagues members of the council and the applicant. Let me introduce to the council members, Miroslav Alexander Evgenievich, Doctor of Chemical Sciences, Associate Professor of the Department of Radiochemistry at the Pittsburgh University. Can you see and hear us? Uh, I can hear you very poorly. Yeah, now I can hear you. Alexey Igor Evgenievich, Doctor of Chemical Sciences, Chief Meteorologist, Head of the Meteorological Service of Klopin Radium Institute. Can you see and hear us? Yeah, that's excellent. Sidorenko Georgi Vasilovich, Doctor of Chemical Sciences, leading researcher of Klopin Radium Institute. Uh, can you see and hear? Shadira Alegiosvich, Doctor of Chemical Sciences, Professor, Head of the Department of Radiation Chemistry the Chemical Pharmaceutical Technologies at the Belarusian State University, Belarus. Can you see? And he has, yes, all is well. And the degree applicant, Krotov, Sergei Alexeyevich. Yes, I can, I can see and hear you. And the academic advisor of the degree applicant, Yermalenko Yurigenich, Doctor of Chemical Sciences, Professor of the Radiochemistry Department of St. Petersburg University. Can you see us? Can you hear us? Yes, yes, the answer is yes. So, all the members of the Dissertation Council and the applicant are present. We can all, all see and hear each other. Since our meeting is held in remote access mode, in accordance with St. Petersburg University order of the 23rd of March, I invite all the participants to follow the procedure closely. If there's a technical failure, and you stop seeing or hearing someone, please let me know until such issues are eliminated. Uh, if the connection with me is lost, I, I would like to request Miroslav Alexander Genevich to call a technical break. And if the connection is not restored to preside at the meeting, Alexander Genevich, do you agree? Dear members, do you mind? Do you, uh, no, no. No, we have no objections. Excellent. Okay, then let me inform you that our meeting is being recorded and broadcast online at St. Petersburg University, and the speeches are being simultaneously translated from Russian to English and from English into Russian. Uh, the applicant's page currently displays an email address to which anyone uh, can send questions to the applicant regarding uh, his thesis and the ongoing scientific discussion. These questions shall be forwarded to me and I shall read them out during the discussion talk. Questions should be related strictly to the applicant's speech and the content of his thesis and must include name, position and place of work of the author. Of the questions that are not related to the scientific discussion, uh, discussion of the thesis, the text, or evaluation of the thesis should not be presented. Uh, in accordance with internal regulations of St. Petersburg University, a session of the Dissertation Council is duly constituted if at least two thirds of the approved members of the Council are participating, but not less than <clears throat> four persons. So, Thus, we have the quorum, uh, audio visual contact, 
has been established with all the council members. So, so we uh, can start the session. I trust curator of the defense officer of the Destination Council Support Department, Shevelyova Yulia Sergeyevna, to draw up the attendance list in which the dissertation council members present and the applicant for the degree shall be recorded and to indicate their work mode. I suggest the following procedure for today's session with approximate duration of approximately two hours. Uh, chairman summary report on the main content documents submitted by the applicant about approximately five minutes. Then we shall give the floor to the applicant for no more than 20 minutes for his presentation, uh, his research. Questions to the applicant, no more than two minutes per question. Answers of the applicant, maximum five minutes for all the questions. That shall be followed by speeches of all members of the dissertation council with their reviews. And uh, with their uh, opinions, questions and suggestions to the applicant. Speech of the chairman and my review and approximately 10 minutes. Final answers of the applicant to questions and comments. Uh, that shall be followed by a presentation of questions sent by email and uh, the applicant's answers. Speech of the academic advisor, no more than three minutes. And then we shall proceed to the, uh, get the council member discussion of the defense results. Uh, for the time of this uh, discussion, if it is needed, broadcast sound shall be switched off. After that, we shall proceed to the open individual voting and counting the votes and recording them in the minutes of the meeting. And finally, we shall decide on awarding or not awarding the academic degree to the applicant. Uh, and uh, that should be followed by the closing remarks of the applicant. Uh, do, does anyone have objections to this procedure? No objections, no. Uh, if no one has, uh, let's start our session. A case. In case there's some, uh, you, know, you experience some technical issues, please let us know immediately. First of all, uh, let's give the floor to the academic advisor of Kortov Sergei Alexandrovich, Doctor of Chemical Sciences, Professor of Radiochemistry Department at St. Petersburg University, Yermolenko Yuri Evgenievich. And uh, so let him, dear colleagues, dear members of the Dissertation Council, as the academic advisor of the degree applicant, professor of the uh, radiochemistry department, Yermolenko Yurigenich, I would like to introduce our former doctoral student who's been working on this, uh, uh, on his thesis for over five years, uh, thermal methods for isolation of, med of uh, medical radionuclides. Uh, the work uh, was performed at our department at St. Petersburg uh, in, uh, Nuclear Physics Institute. I'm pleased to introduce my student and colleague, Krotov Sergei Alexe uh, Alexeyevich. Uh, thank you very much, Yuri Genich. Now let us, uh, let me make some formal announcements. Uh, the thesis by Krotov Sergei Alexeyevich for the uh, degree of candidate of chemical sciences and scientific specialization 020014 in radiochemistry and the theme thermal methods for isolation medical radionuclides from uh, irradiated targets was accepted for defense by the order of the academic secretary of Petersburg university on the 14th of february 2020 964-1 krotov sergey alexandrovich wrote his thesis on the basis of st petersburg university the academic advisor of Krotov Sergei Alexeyevich, is Doctor of Chemical Sciences, Professor of the Radiochemistry Department, Yermolenka Yurigash, number of publications of the applicant which set out the main scientific results of the thesis is six, including publications and journals indexed in the Centimetric Databases Web of Science, 
three publications and peer-reviewed scientific journals from the list approved by the Minister of Education and Science of the Russian Federation. One publication they are, uh, can respond to the requirements. The applicant submitted to the Academic Secretary of St. Petersburg University a full package of documents for the thesis to be accepted for consideration and defense. All the documents comply with uh, the order. All the documents submitted by the applicant, according to the information I received from the curator, comply with the requirements and are kept in the applicant's attestation file. Copies are available from the Office of the Decision Council Support Department. Curator today's meeting, Shevelova Yulia Sergeyevna, who's currently in touch with us. So if anyone has got any questions, please feel free to ask. Before we give the floor to the applicant, do you, dear council members, have any general questions to the applicant? Is there a, a need uh, to disclose and review the entire list of documents submitted or everything is clear? Please, so we don't have no questions. Everything is clear. Okay, if no one has any questions, then let's give the floor to Sergey Alexeyevich, the degree applicant. And let me remind you that he has exactly 20 minutes. Good, uh, good morning, dear council members. Can you see my presentation? Yes, we can. Uh, good morning. Uh, uh, the theme of uh, thermal methods for isolation of medical radionuclides from irradiated targets. The theoretical part of this work was carried out at the Department of Radiochemistry at St. Petersburg University under the guidance of Professor Yuri Evgeny Shermolinka, and the experimental part was carried out in the Sardar Laboratory of short-lived nuclei of St. Petersburg Institute of Nuclear Phys uh, Physics under the guidance of Canada Physics and Mathematics, uh, Valerian Nikolaj Pantelev. Recently, methods of nuclear physics, chemistry, and other science-intensive technologies have been continuously introduced in all areas related to quality of human life, including development of nuclear medical field. One of the modern promising areas of medicine is nuclear medicine. Methods of nuclear medicine allow to diagnose and conduct ther therapy of diseases at the earliest stages of development when a person doesn't feel symptoms of, of a disease. However, efficiency and safety of such methods require high purity and often scarce radionuclides. So, uh, such radionuclides must be of high radiochemical, chemical, and radionuclide purity. Such purity is often difficult or even impossible to achieve using the classical chemical release and purification methods. Therefore, the development and optimization of alternative methods for obtaining medical radionuclides is an urgent task today for the global radiochemical community. This slide shows a range of radionuclides we have chosen for our work. Each of them is extremely promising for various areas of nuclear medicine, and all of them are difficult to obtain in pure form using the classical methods of wet chemistry. The, uh, thus, the objective of my study was uh, to develop thermal methods of isolation and number of medical radionuclides to achieve this task, I had to address a number of tasks, identify a spectrum of practically significant radionuclides that are difficult to obtain. Uh, next, to develop and optimize thermal methods of isolation of selected, uh, determine the effectiveness of these uh, uh, methods. The film comparison analysis on the thermal classical isolation methods. However, planned work could not be done without uh, use, only using model maker of stable substances. Uh, to uh, to uh, use uh, uh, St. Petersburg Institute of Nuclear Physics and Geoproponents 1G. Uh, in the future, part of it was planned to be used for isolation of medical radionuclides produced on uh, RIC 80, um, also in St. Petersburg uh, Nuclear Physics. This table shows the main part of medical radionuclides uh, which shall be produced at the complex. In the beginning of my report, I already mentioned uh, low efficiency of classical chemical methods for isolation of uh, radi medical radionuclides. This slide presents examples of uh, obtaining uh, radionuclides we have chosen for our work, in, in particular, uh, lutetium-177 uh, is uh, extracted uh, as uh, most effective method, classical methods. 
As you can see, it consists of 15 stages, which result in high losses of ta target radionuclide, large amounts of radioactive waste, and requires subsequent recovery of the target substance to its original form. On the right side, uh, see uh, two different uh, 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 two different installations. For uh, both these methods, are very time and energy consuming, and at the same time, uh, end up with great amounts of uh, radioactive waste. All the disadvantages lead to decrease in the effectiveness, and once again, uh, reflect the relevance of my work. To improve efficiency of a release of target radionuclides, we developed a thermal method of radionuclide release. Uh, should be noted that some studies in this field have already been carried earlier and um, by uh, Soviet or Russian scientific groups. So you may say this is a unique uh, sphere of uh, national science. Uh, thermal methods are uh, based on uh, if there's sufficient difference of vapor pressure, it's possible to assume the possibility of complete separation of the carrier red nucleus from the matrix. General scheme of using the thermal method was uh, looks as follows: the irradiated target uh, tantalum uh, capsule was placed in a tantalum furnace, uh, which you can see on the left, and uh, heated to a particular uh, temperature. Uh, after uh, reached the temperature was reached. Uh, uh, we can hear you. Can you switch the microphone off? I uh, beg your pardon. I will not do that again. Okay. Uh, tantalum capsule uh, with irradiated uh, placed uh, in uh, and heated to a particular temperature, to a certain temperature. After uh, that, uh, target. Um, the uh, remaining capsule was washed away uh, by uh, so remained inside the capsule and then was washed away by some acid solution. Uh, efficiency is controlled by removal of gamma spectra of uh, irradiated samples using a gamma detector from high purity germanium before, after, and after washing off. On the left, uh, you may see a uh, prototype target device, a horizontal target. Um, as you can see, tantalum capsule is uh, placed in tantalum uh, furnace uh, with uh, what are called copper holders and uh, target substance evaporated in, uh, through here. So, but this is only, is only uh, can use on in, in a lab uh, for industrial, uh, production, we pre propose the following. As, uh, the main difference here is, uh, is a membrane uh, so in case of radiation and uh, the pipe after the membrane is removed, capsule in the ballast volume, uh, which al uh, allows the target substance to evaporate from the capsule. We believe that such substance uh, can unite uh, irradiation evaporation pro processes. Should be noted that all uh, the studies of thermal method were conducted uh, in accordance with the scientific plans of the uh, laboratory. First of all, the development of the thermal method was carried out for strontium-82 radionuclide, strontium-82 and rubidium-82. These are uh, generators pair. As uh, uh, cardiovascular system disease and brain tumors. Its material, radionuclide, uh, strontium 82, is produced by radiation of rubidium target uh, on, on uh, strontium 82 on, uh, on the proton air beam. Uh, energy is about uh, one bond and proton energy about uh, 45 50 MeV. Based on the on the pressure temperature dependence diagram, uh, which you can see on the left, uh, we determined the possibility of uh, the isolating them. So after uh, irradiation, uh, which uh, required uh, cooling down, this, uh, um, a capsule with uh, irradiated target substance was uh, uh, 
and was uh, and extracted for the technology. Uh, capsule was heated to seven uh, to eight hundred degrees Celsius, and uh, extraction took one hour. As you can see, uh, or through a a spectrum uh, taken uh, before uh, the black line on the on the uh, right, a target substance and the target radionuclide uh, remain in the caps inside the capsule. Uh, line strontium uh, rubidium, which has been used. Uh, uh, was used as a label for qualitative and semi-quantitative definition of finding the matrix in the capsule. Yet, after heating, you may see that uh, strontium-82 remains inside the cap and rubidium uh, has evaporated uh, almost completely. It should, uh, it should, one should remember that uh, 2%, about approximately 2% of uh, remaining target substance remain in the capsule after heating. And uh, additional heating, in this case, rubidium is in a uh, uh, vol highly volatile form. After obtaining results on separation strontium from a uh, metal target of rubidium, we decided uh, to substitute uh, metal uh, matrix for some rubidium salt uh, based on the form of the target product, uh, strontium uh, uh, chloride 2, and based on the uh, so we decided uh, to conduct an experiment to isolate strontium-82 chemical method uh, from the binary target, rubidium chloride. After um, standard manipulations, uh, the irradiated uh, capsule was placed in a, a furnace and heated to the temperature above 100 degrees Celsius. At uh, that temperature, as you can see, part of the gamma spectrum of the radiated uh, rubidium chloride uh, uh, and during one hour it got completely evaporated and uh, settled on the ballast uh, and the target material remained inside the capsule um, after uh, target substance was 10 percent was washed in the uh, uh, acid and after uh, washing off shown on the right the results show full transition of uh, target radionuclide into the solution. So we succeeded uh, to separate uh, target radionuclides from binary target. At that, efficiency was uh, almost 99.9% and time of separation of uh, separation was only one hour. After successful experiment uh, to isolate strontium-82, this method was used to produce a, uh, other medical radionuclides, especially copper-67, which is used in BRCA therapy. In our case, copper-67 is produced by irradiating zinc targets, the nuclear reaction of six, uh, six, uh, zinc-68 with them. Yet, uh, the main uh, difference here is uh, presence of titanium foil as, uh, to reduce uh, proton energy. Uh, from one meth to 100 meth. Uh, because of the presence of titanium, uh, volatile uh, scandium, so 46, and we decided uh, to conduct an additional experiment to isolate copper, target copper and scandium 46, which uh, from medical indications for end use should be e excluded from the target product. And uh, on a, so, so, so we determined the possibility of uh, thermal separation and at 700 degrees Celsius, uh, target substance, uh, uh, zinc, uh, within one hour was completely removed from a capsule. As you can see from gamma spectrum shown on the, on the right, uh, copper remained inside the capsule, including this uh, highly volatile scandium. Uh, having studied uh, the uh, data for uh, copper and scandium, we decided to conduct uh, extra heating uh, to separate them. So a capsule uh, was uh, additionally heated to the temperature of 1,500 degrees Celsius, and at that temperature we were uh, able to separate uh, uh, to cooled collector the target radionuclide of uh, uh, copper-67, uh, which is shown by gamma spectrum, taken uh, after uh, 
extraction collectors, you can see it on the right, uh, you can see gamma line of copper in absence of red line uh, of a target, for a complete absence of target sub substance on the collector or of scandium. Thus, we succeeded uh, to separate uh, by uh, thermal method isotopes of two different elements in micro quantities. And final, uh, last radionuclide was radionuclide of lutetium-177. Lutetium-177 is one of the most promising and in demand of uh, uh, prostate cancer and theranoscopy. However, the whole range of serious problems associated with development and isolation of lutetium, uh, for medical use, lutetium-177, uh, is uh, produced in a nuclear reactor channel. Uh, first, uh, this uh, lithium-176 target, and the second is ytterbium-176 uh, uh, target. It, we were interested in the second indirect method. Uh, the uh, uh, ytterbium-176 target is uh, irradiated uh, ytterbium-177, which has uh, 1.9 hour, it's beta minus uh, transformation, and turns into lutetium 177. This slide shows relation in accumulation, uh, depending on time of irradiation. And cross section of uh, reaction uh, is 285 barns, and thermal neutron flux uh, no lower than 2 uh, times 10 in the 15th degree, with specific activity of lithium being. Uh, 350 to 400 uh, millicurie by, uh, by milligram. The difference in vapor pressure between lutetium and ytterbium shown in the graphs on the right side shows the possibility of their thermal separation. Uh, at first, we didn't have a, an opportunity to irradiate uh, the ytterbium target. So the first experiments uh, we were conducted with the uh, sample of met met metallic ytterbium uh, irradiated uh, proton beam and uh, the radiation, uh, lithium and uh, radiant nuclide ytterbium once and the summer were accumulated in, in the target. And in that uh, in their case, we use the same technology. And after uh, heating to 900 degrees uh, the, with uh, residue target substance, uh, was additional heating was applied and uh, the proton beam before and after heating and after second heating after washing off. The so force was 10% uh, uh, hydrochloric acid solution. As you can see, uh, before and uh, both the target remain inside the capsule after second heating, uh, target radiocline remains and target substance uh, is almost completely gone. And so what remains uh, transfers into this is, gets transferred into the solution. In the future, uh, so we had the got the opportunity to radiate on the nitrons and to bring the parameters closer to reality. Uh, we applied additional radiation on metron D, uh, 10 in the fifth uh, on a synchro cyclotron SC1000. Same time, the, ta uh, the target rate of lithium 177 uh, and uh, ytterbium. 106 was news. Uh, time was uh, 46 sample weight was uh, about 250 milligrams. As a result, after uh, final processing with gamma spectrum, uh, we found full presence of lutetium 177 inside the capsule, and also we found 2% of original ytterbium, a target substance. And again, as in the case with uh, metallic rubidium, we suggested that ytterbium is in the form of a, a heavy, highly volatile uh, uh, ytterbium oxide. At, at the moment, we are working on an alternative matrix to extract uh, uh, lithium-177, but we are also considering the possibility to purify uh, target radionuclide from target substance with the help of the classical methods. Yet it should be noted that uh, even with this need for additional purification, work uh, will will work with um, micro quantities, but not with the uh, whole amount of the target, uh, which once again demonstrates uh, efficiency of the thermal isolation method. 
This slide shows the main results. I shall not read them aloud. Uh, what I would like to say is the work uh, is the, going on. Uh, so we got a grant to, uh, for fundamental research, uh, Russian Federation, and uh, Lutetium um, uh, uh, Isolation receives the patent of the Russian Federation. Thank you for your attention. And uh, I shall give my uh, words of thanks. I'm, I look forward to your questions. Uh, may I ask a question? Uh, from physical chemistry, the pressure from uh, melted phase or from the uh, hot phase, or is, or it depends. It depends. Each case uh, should be discussed separately. Uh, applied to targets. Uh, such research has not been conducted before. Uh, research, uh, if we speak of a metallic target, so then we talk about the melted state. And if the, it's a binary, in case of a binary target, so this, uh, I see. And my second question. Uh, is uh, target radium uh, wasted? Uh, and can this such waste be uh, assessed somehow? If a method, a method has not been optimized for a particular target, for example, if you heat it too much, as we did in, our, in, the, in the first experiments, of course, uh, even emission of uh, target substance is possible, but once the method is optimized, uh, you add two, three degrees per 10 minutes, then uh, in the end, uh, uh, evaporation will be so slow that uh, target radionuclide will not be captured and uh, macro uh, quantities uh, will evaporate uh, will be very uh, very minor so waste will be maybe uh, the, the waste will be uh, neglectable maybe uh, several percent uh, with the help of optimized method detector uh, uh, no, we, we detected no loss, no waste, uh, macro quantities. And in the slide 13, uh, lutetium, uh, slide, uh, in slide 13, no, we mean because we irradiated on protons, so it's a, so it's a different system. So it's an, it's an illustration. Uh, that's to illustrate it. Yes. At that time, we, we, we didn't have an opportunity to irradiate on, so we irradiated on protons. Thank you. May I ask a question? May I ask a question? Uh, yes. Are there any limitations for the use of thermal method for uh, uh, radionuclide isolation? Uh, a priori limitation is uh, similar uh, vapor pressure values. For example, if uh, pressure values are similar, they will not be, it will not be possible to isolate. Is this the only indicator as far as we are familiar with the uh, basic uh, fundamental, I think, yes, it is. Then comparing wet and thermal isolation methods where Uh, where's, what is the advantage of uh, the thermal method? Uh, look at, first of all, uh, nuclear waste, we all know how hard it is to manage them. Uh, with the use of a thermal method, there, will, there is no radioactive waste, target substance, uh, which is very rare, as was the case with the terbium, uh, is not destroyed, is not uh, converted into other chemical form, it can be extracted, and can be used uh, further. Uh, the uh, duration, the method takes on a maximum two hours. Uh, and if we optimize uh, even more, uh, so it will only take one hour. Uh, so we can remove 100 of uh, target substance uh, without destroying it. Uh, I have one small question, please. Uh, oxide uh, remains in your uh, target. Uh, Simple uh, uh, vacuum 
was about 10 in the fifth degree. So not so so big. Uh, so that, that's, that's as best as we could get go. So this could be minimized uh, if you apply better vacuum. Uh, there are several methods uh, by uh, applying better vacuum or by increasing the size or the quantity of target substance. Then uh, the surface uh, relation to, so we will, there will be uh, less, uh, smaller amount of target substance in the capsule. Uh, the uh, smallest oxide film. More questions uh, regarding the presentation. Then I have a very small question. When irradiating rubidium, uh, did you get any additional radionuclides? Or uh, so this? Yeah, I see. I understand your question. Thank you. Uh, first of all, because irradiation was on one GEV uh, proton beam in the target, uh, produced a lot of uh, radionuclides. They were uh, easily volatile. Uh, and uh, as before uh, target rubidium, and uh, when irradiating emission rubidium, uh, strontium, strontium 82, strontium 83 uh, and 85, but presence of uh, strontium 83 uh, is acceptable with the use of a generator because the relation is and generator is considered used uh, when the relation is reverse. And one uh, to one uh, fraction of strontium to the energy of, of uh, uh, 4550 mev, one barn. Uh, this is not uh, the largest cross section that can be achieved on uh, protons for strontium 82, and the cross section uh, for uh, impurity radiant crisis is, is the lowest, the smallest. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have more? Uh, may I ask another question? Uh, maybe you mean acceptable uh, impurities of Kali. Of, uh, and what happened? What happened in case of such uh, impurities? Uh, in case of such impurities, uh, should be removed. Uh, I think it will fly easily, and cesium also. Uh, uh, but uh, maybe you get radionuclides hard to uh, potassium will fly easily. So it depends on uh, well, what sample you get. In our case, it uh, was uh, important for us to see uh, isolation of target radionuclide, but uh, all volatile uh, removed, so they fly away also. <laughs> Thank you. I have one comment. Uh, uh, first, uh, scandium uh, is not, it uh, flew to the target. Uh, no one was able to prove that this is rubidium oxide. Mm. There's no, there's what the qualities of, uh, origi of uh, original uh, material. So, so then we, by different variants are possible, uh, but uh, with the equipment that we have, it was impossible to measure exactly uh, what uh, resource centers. Resource centers, not all resource centers are ready to work with uh, radioactive material. Uh, so wait uh, till uh, complete. Uh, so maybe we can get uh, for com uh, co complete decay and then complete dissociation. Uh, dear members of the dissertation council, do you have more, co more uh, questions regarding the presentation? No one has, uh, we, uh, uh, no, we have not received 
any external questions, then we can proceed to the next part of our session, which is speeches of the dissertation council members in their reviews. No external reviews have been received. So uh, only members of the, since all the uh, reviews have been published at the university website, I suggest uh, that uh, council members point out the key points and focus more on questions and comments to the applicant. If no one has any objections, no one has objections to that, let me, let's hear the reviews of the council members. And first, I'd like to give the floor to Miroslav Alexander Yevgenovich. Uh, well, uh, once again, uh, I think uh, the work of Sergei Alexeyevich is highly relevant. Uh, this this uh, subject is very popular for pharmaceutical in the industry, uh, therapeutical preparations, and the method suggested by Sergei Alexeyevich uh, can efficiently, quickly, with a little waste of uh, target reading nuclides and with minimum formation of nuclear waste, isolate uh, uh, these isotopes. So there's no doubt in the relevance. I have no doubt in the, the relevance of this work. So I shall go straight maybe to the comments because all the uh, strong points I've described in the so. And uh, uh, so, as for literature review, I think uh, contains too much excessive information, uh, which is not connected with the. So, what is nuclear medicine principles? I think that uh, this information should not be included in this work uh, uh, is it washes away the thesis and focus more on the information on the isotopes studied. Next, I have some specific comments uh, regarding the work. Itself. Can we go back to the presentation? Can you start the presenta your presentation again? <clears throat> so, Galaxevich, can you start the, your presentation, please? Uh, slide 11, I think it was. when we give some specific experimental data, uh, it uh, should be uh, obvious if the data was obtained by the author, is uh, this, this slide, uh, the relation is, uh, maybe it's not exactly right. So if you got this information, uh, from a source, so should be the source should be because uh, uh, in the same page you show data obtained by you, and uh, I don't think that this is true. So this is a and uh, many uh, several times uh, there was no you make no reference uh, to uh, original sources. As for the tertium isolation, you mentioned two methods. In fact, uh, uh, there is only one method from ytterbium. Uh, ytterbium is, is impossible 
and this year 177 uh, but there's a big mixture of isomer uh, which uh, cannot is, is not suitable for medical use uh, so the second method uh, is good for research uh, but uh, cannot be used for medical radionuclide so these are my comments in general, uh, but uh, gen in general, the work is relevant, uh, significant, uh, up to date. Uh, there is very much in demand at our institute, and I wish uh, to bring this project to uh, practical, uh, the practical result that can be used. Uh, to produce lutetium 177 and uh, I have no doubt uh, that the degree applicant Krotov Sergeyevich who presented this work deserves the degree of uh, candidate of chemical sciences. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, thank you Alexander Genevich. I suggest uh, the degree applicant to answer all the questions and remarks in the end because uh, some questions are quite similar. Uh, yes, Igor Valentinovich, there's one thing Alexander Evgenievich uh, uh, asked, uh, his question was well, slightly different. So may I answer uh, right now because uh, I might forget. Uh, so first of all, as uh, for the uh, literature data, the uh, uh, vapor pressure values were taken from literature, uh, but I made the graphs myself. That is why I made no reference to brief uh, uh, reference book of a chemist of a copper. As uh, so, I uh, built the graph on three uh, points, but it, because of corrections, uh, so we um, made straight lines. As for lutetium-177, there's one thing here. Lutetium-177 is used, obtained uh, through direct method, is used in medicine uh, uh, for uh, as radium uh, for bone uh, pain. Uh, so it can be used as far as, so I found such data. So. I don't know why uh, it's uh, why it is used because radium is available, but for some reason they uh, it's used like that like that, and uh, litesium extraction of litesium seventy seven for litesium one seventy six, maybe you know, uh, and uh, at our institute some researchers are involved. Uh, and uh, as for uh, too much water in the teacher, uh, in, uh, literature review, uh, chapters one and uh, two, uh, Georgi Vasilovich uh, will have sim will make similar comment. Well, you then radi why do we need radionuclides and what radionuclides are uh, we how we use them and uh, which radionuclides can be obtained uh, with the help of the thermal methods. Uh, so in the candidate's thesis, for me, it was uh, relevant. Thank you very much. So the next uh, review uh, shall be, is here reviewed by uh, uh, Igor Evgenich Alexeyev. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, is because uh, it uh, is a very uh, good thesis because it continues the tradition uh, of the national of Bantelev and uh, my uh, native uh, department of radiochemistry. Uh, so I shall not read uh, the uh, uh, formal part. Uh, we'll just give uh, mention the strong points and uh, uh, points for discussion. Uh, two contribution, main contributions made there by the author. The uh, volatile target. Uh, because these are very obvious, but the opportunity to isolate uh, uh, of uh, uh, without carrier uh, quantities of both. And well, second is uh, uh, 
uh, micro quantities of irradiated targets uh, removal and uh, getting a product of high quality. Uh, so they may will make the procedure much easier. Uh, as for comments, I have two experimental data. Energy of charged uh, when uh, irradiated with ru uh, rubidium. The technology of strontium uh, uh, extraction is uh, uh, colleagues. Uh, give me two minutes. Can you give me two minutes, please? Uh, so we'll, uh, let's take a technical break for two minutes, please. <clears throat> session. Uh, Yuri Genevich is back. Genevich is back. Uh, the second comment uh, is an experimental artifact. The author irradiated a binary uh, target. A binary target, uh, not with a high uh, melting uh, temperature, but low melting temperature. Uh, can you explain uh, what uh, physical and chemical processes may occur inside the target? Did it preserve its uh, chemical form if the author assumes that the chemical form could be broken? So will it should be uh, taken into consideration uh, for future isolation. Uh, otherwise, it's a remarkable thesis, and the uh, degree applicant deserves to be awarded the degree of uh, candidate of. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I did not announce the end of our technical break. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Yuri Genevich. Yuri Genevich. So, uh, do you want to answer all? Okay, uh, thank you uh, very much, Igor Genevich, for your comments and for your review. And let me answer, try to answer your questions, as I already uh, mentioned. Of course, uh, all the irradiations were conducted uh, on uh, with one uh, thousand MeV uh, because it's, it's, it's works twenty four hours is used all that around the clock and it's uh, the uh, device is not new so the current can be uh, bigger or, or smaller as for the time i mentioned in my presentation of radiation but of course uh, so this was i wrote this uh, in view of your comments and the second question i would like to answer is this uh, while this why uh, choice of a, a binary target uh, is uh, uh, sublimation tendency and uh, uh, strong strontium uh, uh, chloride too. Uh, both process occur in the target during and after exposure. Uh, we haven't studied this in detail because we didn't have the equipment, uh, but uh, in the future we hope to study this uh, fundamental issue. Uh, physical and chemical processes occurring in the target and there is uh, stimula uh, stimulated effects. Uh, so we have uh, a turbo, but uh, no one will uh, prohibit us to use a binary uh, target. Uh, so we hope to get permission from uh, consent from Gatchina for this. And uh, one give uh, many different uh, uh, defects may occur and physical chemical characteristics of the target substance may change significantly and uh, we hope to conduct this research in the near future. <laughs>
so when we conduct these experiments with Pantelev, uh, uh, so it will be interesting to know uh, in what form a uh, target radionuclide uh, uh, is after irradiation, and maybe we'll write articles on that. Uh, thank you. Next, let's give the floor to uh, Sidorenko Georgi Vasilovich. Can you hear me? Uh, I shall not read the formal part. We'll go straight to strong points and comments. Uh, two uh, chapters of uh, the literature overview uh, demonstrate uh, which is good, uh, but in my opinion, is not uh, connected. The material uh, is not uh, immediately connected with the subject of the thesis. Uh, would make sense to make it shorter. Uh, also, uh, the uh, sphere of analysis uh, should be uh, connected more closely with the choice of radionuclides and aspects of their isolation. And uh, so we uh, get to that point only in the next chapter, as in his, uh, so, uh, results of his own work and chapter five. So here, I uh, would like to distinguish more clearly the transition from analysis of known methods to presentation of our author's own results. But on the other hand, it would be good uh, to uh, give brief data on diagrams of the state of systems under study, mutual solubility of components, formation of intermetallic compounds, etc., as uh, factors that may affect the isolation efficiency. In general, the main achievement of the author of great practical importance is the development of effective methods of separation of radionuclides to a nuclear from a nuclear medicine. In the course of an author demonstrated not only broad erudition, but also high professional skills uh, well, working the radioactive isotopes, construction experimental facilities, analysis of results, and uh, uh, even um, a command of a wide range of research methods. All the tasks set have been successfully solved. And the above remarks refer only to the form of presentation of material, but do not affect the essence and do not question uh, credibility, do not affect novelty and practical significance of the work. So I think the author of the thesis corresponds to the requirements and deserves to be awarded the degree uh, in radiochemistry. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Georgi Vasilievich. Uh, let me try and answer your question. As for you, I have uh, more or less answered, uh, Alexander Yevgenovich. One thing I would like to add uh, is, uh, for intermetallic uh, compounds, the study of all parameters of the target and intersolubility, in this case, is uh, very often, uh, there's absolutely no data uh, about the studied system, for example, about lutetium turbine. And uh, data for intermetallites or intersolubility, they may uh, be not quite accurate uh, if you approximate them to a uh, micro of short lived radionuclides. So, in that case, the physics can be completely different. And in this case, uh, everything that happened in the targets, we didn't have uh, the equipment for that, uh, which uh, Institute of Nuclear Physics does not have. Uh, but as I already said, to uh, uh, Igor Evgenievich, uh, we shall, uh, we hope to do this with the help of a grant we received. Thank you. Uh, and I will take your, uh, all your comments into consideration in my future work. Uh, well, uh, Oleg Iosifovich, uh, your uh, review, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, for me, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to take part. Uh, as a chemist, I'm very satisfied by this work uh, in radiochemistry. It was a pleasure to read it. They did, you know, radiochemical studies and radiology studies. We, to some extent, depend on how nuclear medicine develops. 
and in this case, obtaining new radionuclides and uh, putting them into practice. So it's important to understand processes and uh, which help to cure uh, diseases. So the work is very interesting, it's very useful and obtaining new radionuclides and using them in medicine for diagnostics, for therapy is very important. And I support uh, my colleagues, their work is highly relevant. And uh, as for uh, critical comments, for me, I think uh, as, uh, the author, how the author compares the classical method and his method is easy, difficult, uh, I think uh, would be uh, these to uh, give the advantages of methods and by, uh, so I have the following comments, uh, choice of radionuclides and uh, practical significance is uh, in the radionuclides. Uh, uh, one comment is uh, no doubt that in the framework of the work, huge amount of experiments was carried out. And the dependence is the influence of uh, thermodynamic parameters. The separation of elements was obtained on the basis of which the optimal conditions for the process were determined. But unfortunately, the thesis gives only the final uh, conditions experiments without substantiation or choice of uh, specific parameters. However, uh, these comments do not reduce the overall good experience and the good mood uh, which uh, I got uh, as graduated is uh, and <clears throat> as is uh, so you see such interesting connections of what is happening and what interesting ideas uh, between uh, scientists of Belarus and Russia uh, so I will vote for awarding the degree. So I think the applicant deserves a degree. And a candidate of chemical sciences. Uh, so would you like to answer uh, right now? <clears throat> uh, thank you very much, Oleg Yosipovic. Let me answer your comments. And uh, in this case, uh, so we've our, we made only uh, qualitative uh, assessment, presence or absence of target substance. And as for qualitative assessment, it's quite hard uh, because uh, apart from the fact that these methods are used in uh, uh, laboratories, they are also used in industrial scale where it's very hard to obtain data because this is this is proprietary information uh, hard to reveal so uh, exact numbers on waste it is very hard to obtain even for the classical methods so what we were able to find we used a second question is the choice of radionuclides as i was said we selected radionuclides uh, on the basis of plans work plan of uh, short lived nuclei and uh, so this so this explained the choice of radionuclides and uh, this is a nuclear physics made a contract with the Russian scientific center uh, for to supply uh, radionuclide of strontium 82 that is why we uh, worked with radionuclides uh, rotation 177 is the latest trend uh, which uh, all the uh, laboratories want, and that's why uh, many scientists are working on it. And as for the second, as, uh, about the choice of parameters, uh, parameters uh, I described in some publications, 
and uh, Nuclear Physics Institute. Uh, we conducted and did uh, very many experiments. So method optimization uh, took years, five years. It took uh, totally. And uh, many works uh, on optimization, method optimization we published. <coughs> so we, uh, and since all the equipment is in Petersburg uh, N N Institute of Nuclear Physics, these are prototypes, uh, self-made uh, equipment. It's hard to achieve uh, desired results at once. You have to optimize, you have to test. And this takes a long time. Uh, data processing. <clears throat> so that is why uh, I didn't describe the uh, optimization because that will make my thesis much longer. Thank you. Thank you for your comments and for your review. Okay, then uh, let me uh, present my review. As a lot has been said by my colleagues, I'd like to comment on the two points which uh, prove relevance and novelty and practical significance of the thesis. First of all, it's the effect, the work uh, uh, is dedicated to medicine. Since we, the very fact that we have to, the, this the, the defense uh, is taking part online, uh, this online. And the, the work of Sergei Alexievich, in addition to uh, practical achievements and theoretical, good theoretical results, uh, he uh, got uh, it patented, uh, which proves uh, relevance and significance of his work. As for my comments, uh, uh, they uh, same uh, comments, uh, as already mentioned by my colleagues, for example, it's not clear to me why in the literature of uh, you in the second part uh, is uh, uh, strontium uh, uh, isotope is not mentioned. Uh, the, uh, the author in many that he has never the analysis and uh, errors and how so how reliable they are is not and finally I have one comment the advantages of thermal methods uh, but the author uh, mentions these advantages many times but uh, provides no uh, qualitative parameters uh, to prove these statements but of course these uh, statements are only uh, uh, of specific nature they do not affect the overall positive impression made uh, and well presented thesis and i think that the thesis uh, of uh, Krotos and Gilexiech corresponds to all the uh, requirements uh, set by the order of the modern academic degrees at St. Petersburg University. And the degree applicant deserves to be awarded degree of candidate of chemical sciences, a specialty 020014. Thank you very much. And thank you, Igor Valentinovich. Uh, let me try and answer your uh, comments. First of all, uh, strontium-82 was a fundamental red nuclide. Uh, we started with that, and uh, I said that in the beginning of the work. Uh, methods of uh, isolation of strontium-82 described in detail in Chapter 3, and uh, they get special attention because this, uh, this uh, both classical and some alternative methods. For example, Boris Leonidovich Zhitkov, uh, he, uh, didn't, he, the method that he uses is not is strictly classical. Uh, chapter 2, it, that illustrates with examples effectiveness of different methods for uh, different radiant nuclides and wet and dry methods. So the second chapter represents some kind of a, a scientific basis we need uh, to understand the uh, uh, reason of this where they, uh, the, the 
uh, only available control method was uh, gamma spectrometry using a gamma detector of high purity germanium. And at that, we uh, used a, a software uh, uh, package developed by laboratory staff, and it should be noted. Uh, that in addition to thermal methods of radionuclide release, uh, laboratory, short lead nuclei, in case detection research of ultra short uh, radionuclides, uh, they have obtained excellent scientific results on the world level. Uh, so, because of such uh, research, it's uh, possible to. Uh, get all doubt about uh, efficiency as uh, the theoretical error was approximately 10%, uh, but then it was calculated manually, and uh, the worst we got was 1 to 10%. Uh, with errors, of course, I should uh, have said that in my thesis, and I will, uh, when I work in my doctoral thesis, I will uh, do that. A third question, we're developing and optimizing the thermal methods. As I mentioned already, we had uh, the opportunity to assess them on, to give only qualitative assessment. Uh, but uh, compared to the classical methods, it's, it shows quite vividly uh, their advantages, uh, how effective, how economical uh, they are, which I mentioned in my presentation. Thank you for your review, for your comments, and uh, all these we shall uh, take into account in the future. Dear colleagues, I would like to say that uh, we uh, have not received any additional questions. Uh, all the reviews have been presented, and the degree applicant answered all the questions, so we can move on to the next point of our procedure. Uh, speech uh, of the uh, academic advisor, Yuri Genevich, welcome. Uh, thank you, colleagues. Uh, Krotov, Sergei Alexeyevich, was our student, was my student, St. Petersburg University. Uh, in 2011, he graduated bachelor's program. In 2013, master's program. Uh, entered a doctoral course. So all his life and all his work I was able to follow and uh, so we decided to uh, uh, get him involved in uh, St. Petersburg University, St. Petersburg Institute of Nuclear Physics, uh, Pantelei Vladimir Nikolaevich's laboratory. We are very grateful to uh, Dr. Pantelei for uh, joint guidance and uh, here, I think we got very good synthesis of an education institution and a scientific institution, such as the Nuclear Physics Institute in St. Petersburg, which uh, has unique equipment, uh, methods, and this is what uh, the modern education uh, tries to attempt to create a link between uh, uh, practice and theory. And so the relevance and practical significance of the work, I think, is really uh, beyond any doubt. And uh, generally speaking, I think that all the requirements uh, to the, uh, the um, so requirement of novelty, practical significance, and relevance that corresponds to all the requirements, the work. As a worker, uh, he proved to be a very hardworking researcher, and I hope he will continue his research uh, in uh, scientific uh, radium institute at St. Petersburg Institute of Nuclear Physics, and uh, with uh, his uh, uh, determination, uh, the applicant uh, can uh, move forward uh, in science. And now I would like to support his ambition. And uh, I uh, hope this defense uh, will be successful. So my opinion is, uh, my presentation is positive, of course. Uh, thank you, uh, Yuri Evgenievich. Before we proceed uh, to voting. 
I have to ask because how we are working in the remote access mode. Uh, do council members or the degree applicant have any unanswered questions uh, regarding working in the remote access mode or everything was clear and every everybody was able to hear everything is clear yes everything is clear okay then let me ask members of the dissertation council now we have to proceed to open voting but before that we have the opportunity to uh, take uh, a, have a have a private discussion do we need such a discussion and a switch of the broadcasting and discuss questions or uh, if anyone or reservations if anyone has i don't i don't think we need that no we we don't need i think everything is quite clear and obvious okay so since we all agree that we don't need any additional discussion then i put the question of awarding to Protop Sergei Alexeyevich, the academic degree of Doctor of Chemical Sciences, academic specialization 020014, radio chemistry, to the open individual vote. And let me remind you that a decision of the dissertation council should be considered positive if uh, more than a half, but not less than three members of the council uh, present at the meeting voted for it. Uh, Miroslav Alexander Genevich, your opinion? I am, I think the uh, degree applicant deserves the degree of uh, candidate of uh, chemical sciences. Thank you. Alexeyev, Igor Yevgenovich, your opinion? Uh, definitely deserves the degree. Sidorenko, Georgi Vasilievich, your opinion? I am for awarding a degree. Shadira, Oleg Yosefovich, your opinion? As I said already, I am for awarding the degree. Thank you. And myself, as the chairman of the dissertation council, Svirnovi Gervalentinovic, uh, believe that the applicant definitely deserves to be awarded the degree. Thus, dear colleagues and guests, uh, let me announce that out of five members of the dissertation council members, uh, five voted for, no one voted against, and no one abstained. The decision to award to Krotov Sergei Alexeyevich the degree of candidate of chemical sciences, academic specialty 020014 radiochemistry, has been made. Uh, I congratulate the applicant, and in conclusion, uh, before we give the floor. Uh, let me ask uh, everyone present, do you have any, any comments or maybe unanswered questions regarding the procedure of our meeting held in remote access mode? Uh, I see no one has any, yeah, there are no comments. Then let us give the floor uh, to the degree applicant for his closing remarks. Thank you very much, Igor Valentinovich. In conclusion, I would like to thank, first of all, Daniel Nikolaevich Pantelev and all staff of uh, Laboratory of short lived Media of uh, uh, Kurchatov Institute uh, for many years of good cooperation and invaluable experience. A special thanks to uh, scientific academic advisor, uh, Yuri Genevich. Uh, I uh, have not been a bachelor, have not a uh, complete bachelor course, I was a specialist. So we've known each other for 12 years. Uh, thank you very much for your patience, for uh, making me a radio chemist. And also, uh, I'm very grateful uh, to Igor Valentinovich Smirnov, uh, head of the Department of Radio Chemistry for his assistance uh, and so for the fact that it's possible to conduct research, such interesting research at our department. I'm also very grateful to Alexander Genj Miroslavov uh, for letting me, uh, after I finished uh, my uh, doctoral course, he allowed me to continue my work and to achieve uh, new results with scientific history of nuclear physics. I'd like to 
thank all the council members uh, for uh, accepting the invitation. Aleke Osifovic, Georgi Vasilevich, thank you, Igor Yevgenovich, thank you very much. Special uh, thanks. Uh, we have so much work ahead uh, on the thermal methods. Thank you for your decision. And I hope that uh, uh, you will not be disappointed uh, and will bear proudly the uh, title of uh, candidate of uh, radio chemistry and will continue my uh, research and develop radio chemistry further. Let us once again congratulate a new candidate of sciences on uh, such an important milestone in his life. And so we heard uh, that he has a plan to uh, write, uh, do, do, do a doctoral thesis. So I now I now announce our session closed. I thank all the participants. So please stop uh, online broadcasting. Uh, thank you very much.